let's go straight into England, Italy. Um, are England back or have we papered over some cracks? Neither. Mm. <laughs> Any, yeah. did, did anything impress you by England, by the way? Anything? Or was uh, you like me a bit... What well, all, all we seemed to do differently was make, lit, make less some less mistakes and actually hold the ball for a bit. But even so, we still didn't look that attackingly great. Though Watson we, was good. Watson was excellent. That's a really good plus point. That. I mean, it's obviously not a surprise to anybody, but when you play a midfield of Ford, Farrell, Slade, you'll get the ball to the wingers better. Like, <laughs> I could have picked that team and expected that outcome. And, like, that's what would have happened. But on a sort of more serious note, and is it going to help us beat France? I've sort of I've written this Six Nations off personally for England. I'm, we're, we're not going to win, so and almost sort of don't really care if we're any good at all until the next World Cup. So see what Jones does. See if he can piss anyone else off. Yeah. <laughs> I I was thinking about this Farrell thing. A lot of people have sort of come out with Farrell, and um, he sort of Matt Dawson said he's holding the team back. But and there's like, but he's the captain, blah blah. There's loads of people on different sides, right? The, the fact of the matter is, Owen Farrell at the weekend was terrible. Let's put no bones about that. He is his British and Irish line. He's, he's been fantastic for England over the last few years, but he was terrible against Italy. He was the worst player on the pitch. Like he dropped the ball more times than I can have mentioned. He he just didn't look particularly good. Should have been yellow carded for nearly killing Stephen Varney. He's got a weird obsession with killing young ki young people at the moment. Tried to kill Charlie Atkinson, and he you now tried to kill Stephen Varney. Like for me, George Ford. I've sort of come around to George Ford. I've gone one hundred and eighty on George Ford. Didn't particularly like him, but now I sort of now, now I can see that he can do that attacking edge. Stick foul on the bench or don't play him. What? Teams have been good at the world's best teams that won the World Cups. Damien Delande, Marlonu, Sonny Bill Williams. We talked about Andre Usatazen earlier. Just get a flipping big ball carrying 12 in there. That's all you need. Shut the ball. Go. Like, look at Go Fiku. Like, yes, Go Fiku is not traditionally the 12, but flipping heck, he was smashing people in defense. And he's ball cat. He was getting over the game line every time. That's what we need at 12. We don't need a guy who's like, he's a great 10 on his day. He's not on form at the moment. I'm not saying get rid of him altogether. I'm just thinking for the better of the team, you've got Ollie Lawrence. You've got, I'm not saying at all pick him, but you've got Mark Atkinson, who's smashing people for Gloucester, for example. But there's options in there. You, you need someone to take the ball up that we can take up the middle and then play wide. That's what all teams do. We did it when we were playing in the fourth team. Like James Bannister, shout out if you're listening to Banny. At 12, crash ball option. Give him the ball. It works. I, I just personally think Farrell is not needed. If he's not going to play at 10, he's not needed. Don't play him at 12. It's difficult, isn't it? Because when Tumane is fit, like, obviously, Jones likes Farrell. He's better defensively than Ford. He is the captain um, and was obviously the fly half when we played in the World Cup semi final and beat New Zealand. Like, yeah. that That's was good. good. He's, that is, he's a very, that very is a good, good thing that Owen Farrell has done for England in the really? last year. That's what I said. I said that. I said that he's a fantastic player, but at the moment he's nowhere near as good as he should be. Like if Bowden Barrett did that for New Zealand, if Bowden Barrett dropped the ball as much times as Farrell did, the New Zealanders would be like lynch him, get him out. They would have been like they would have pulled him off. The whole country would have pulled him off the pitch, like. 
you, you know, but, but New Zealand, New Zealand wouldn't have an Australian coaching them. He does what he wants. Yeah. Um, uh, thing is, if what happens if you had Robson start, Farrell at ten, Lawrence at twelve? Would you see a completely different game from Farrell? I, I, I do think that. I think it, it just try that. He's just not a twelve, though. Like, well. He is and he isn't because he's not really a 10 anymore. He's like the the things that George Ford does at 10 and the things that Marcus Smith does and like Callum Sheedy, the things that they do at 10. Owen Farrell doesn't really do that anymore. No. He never really did it. So sort of modern fly half creative player like that's not what Owen Farrell does so he needs Alex Good, Ford like every team that Owen Farrell has been good in has actually had another better loved creative player somewhere else now obviously Farrell is very good at playing 10 and he's done it a lot but Personally, I would love to see Ford, probably Lawrence, because there's nobody else at the moment. Because I don't, one of the reasons I suspect that Jones is a bit hesitant to play him as effectively as Andre Esterhazen is that he really is a 13. He's a like outside break ball carrier rather than a through the middle ball carrier as much as he can do the through through the middle stuff like Robbie Henshaw will stop him Robbie Henshaw can't stop Tuolangi he can't stop Damien Dialendi a lot of people can stop Tuolangi though because that's Tuolangi no, but, yeah. but mm. that's the thing at, at an international level that crash ball 12 Lawrence isn't big enough actually to be in that same category as Henshaw etc but he's, but he's really proud, good at being fast and also strong to play at 13. So we're sort of stuck because we haven't got that great 12. Which is a problem because the, the main problem is because Jones stuck with Ford and Farrell for so long that we couldn't create a 12. Then he brought Lufa, poor old Lufa Burrell in and then pulled him off after 28 minutes in Australia. Like, so kind of we've kind of been stuck I mean yes tualangi has been in there because but then it was his constant backlog of injuries I, I just think again hindsight's a thing we obviously need to be Italy but the point of having Italy in the Six Nations is, in the nicest possible way is so we can beat them and it gives an opportunity for these fringe players to have a go so Ollie Lawrence could have got I don't know 15 to 20 touches on Saturday as opposed to his one touch. And we would have been able to see that. He's up against, was Carlo Canna playing 12? He's a fly half, mate. He's not defensively sound, Carlo Canna. Though he did put his body on the line a lot on the weekend, which I, so, but again, but you look at the team sheet of Garbisi and Canna. I'm any, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm an international level coach. My tactic is I'm running between the two of them. Yeah, yeah, don't disagree. Um, my, the, my, speak of, sorry, John. No, go on, go on. Just on the topic of England ball carriers in the middle of the field, I think Luke Cowan Dickey should keep starting and keep, however, England are structuring their forwards, have Cowan Dickey be the point of the spear in midfield because. Like he is a really good ball carrier, and George is clearly not quite in the form that he has been previously. And Cowan Dickey is in the form of his life, which is a very high level because he's nominated for European Player of the Year three times in a row now. Mm. So, like, he's a good player. Use him. Yeah. Don't no need to be silly. I was going to say. We were talking about this as well, but something to bring up. As I say, he scored two tries at the weekend again. Oh, what poor old Sam Simmons? What are you? What's he going to do? Like, I think 
he's a victim of the 12 problem for me. If we had a big 12, we wouldn't so desperately need Billy Vunapola. And the whole thing flows from there. But because we don't have that big 12, Vunapola has to do all of that heavy make meters, whatever the cost carrying. And so we have to pick him. I, just, I don't think we need to pick him though. But my my thing, my thing is is that after this Six Nations, we've only got two Six Nations before the World Cup, including the year when the World Cup is. The year when the World Cup is, you want to have nailed your team in by that Six Nations, and you're basically having a training run for the World Cup. Next year is going to be a bit of an odd one because it's probably the year after coronavirus is out of the way and you're still kind of building towards the World Cup. If there's any year to try and blood some new players, do it in the middle of coronavirus where they're not going to be intimidated by a crowd because there are bloody none. (laughs) And it's a bit of a non-year anyway. People will probably forget about it by next year. Go and test out something. Go and do something. Not even, not even, I'm not saying start Marcus Smith, Simmons, I don't know, change the whole team, but try something. That team that they started against Italy, there was 13 players who started against Italy in 2018. Like, it's not moving forward. Similarly, Max, like, Max started three games in the last Six Nations. Like, on what, sort of on what basis, but Max Malin's can't even get half an hour. I can't. I, I having I, been I, amazing. That is crystal. My thing is my sort of main for or last point for England at the moment is there's there's no. I personally don't think there's a competition places right. We talked a lot about New Zealand earlier when we start, first started this pod right. Hoskins to two two. We love Hoskins to two on the Rock and Roll podcast. He carves it up in Super Rugby. Oh shock horror! He gets picked for New Zealand. Caleb Clark carves it up. Is he the finished article? No, he's not. But he gets a test to cap for New Zealand. Will Jordan setting the world on fire. He's capped. Like, he's playing. Like, ahead of Damian McKenzie, who's been to the World Cup, ahead of other people, they're playing on form. Like, Max Malins has been carving it up for Bristol. He's faster than Daly. He's got probably at the moment a better kicking game than Daly, which apparently Jones wants a kicking game. Uh, that for me, if you if we, like Daly goes down or whatever, and I still don't think Daly's the best foot, foot 15 in general for us anyway, but let's cut, cut that argument short there. But Watson moves across in there, but Watson's ultimately should be on the wing based on the weekend because I do think that's his best position. You've got, where there's no point of being in the World Cup and then being, oh, Max, didn't you come, mate? Oh, you're pl- who are you playing against? Oh, you're playing against, who's your opposite number? Oh, it's Will Jordan. Oh, he's the same age, though. But Will Jordan's got 35 caps now. Good luck. Like, just pick, pick him on, again, we've come to the thing, pick him on four. Sam Simmons scored 11 tries this year. He might not score 11 tries for England. But he's doing something right. Sam's, Marcus Smith, again, he's maybe not ready just yet. He's playing well. Pick on four. We keep saying the same thing. Anything more in England, or should we big up the Italians for a bit? Very well to see. See what he does. I I really liked Italy for the first five minutes. That was a fantastic try by Oni in the corner. I was like, well, yeah, we're watching New Zealand play. It was fantastic. They brought so much intensity. Like, and I think really, if Garbisi had kicked the ball off the field instead of keeping it on and not kicking it to Watson and Daly as much, they might have been in the game. And I, and I, and I, I really didn't want to start bagging referees, but Italy didn't get the rub on the rep, some of those decisions for me. No, def- definitely, definitely not. But I thought either way it was going to be the same result it would have just been a lot closer. Um, and I think what Italy need is how all France have come good. France already a very good team, but have 
solidified their kind of top spot. Scotland have come good. And that's actually just having a very good defence. Like, if Italy could just have a very good defence, it would make a hell of a lot of difference to the final result in the game. Because they can be competitive for 40 minutes in a lot of games. By 60 minutes, they're out of the game. Yeah. Um, and France have tightened up. Scotland have had a great defensive effort for, I don't know, since the World Cup, basically. Um, and I reckon if they just kind of got a really good defence coat soon, could could make a, a big difference. But I think yeah, go on, try. it's probably more fitness than coaching, to be honest. Like, their team is so young. It takes time to build up the, like, I'm not obviously not a sports scientist, but there's a reason that young players don't play, like, in any sport, really, don't play every minute for their teams. Not, I mean, not only because they're generally not quite there yet, ability-wise, but this, this Italy team, I think their average caps is like four or five. Mm. Like every game they play together is one of their first test matches. It's not particularly against England and also this France team. It's really not a surprise that they that they wilted towards the end, considering just the sheer amount of work you have to go through to defend against those two teams. Um, plenty to be optimistic about. But they Frisbee. look so they're much. Gonna, they're going to be great at the World Cup. So Three years time, this yeah. team. But they look so much better than they have done in previous years. Like I was thinking back the other day when I was looking at Stephen Barney, like having one of the best nights since probably Alessandro Troncom for Italy. And I still remember the game where you probably remember it as well when Maro, um, where Bergamasco play had to play nine. Like that's when Italy were crap. Like that is legitimately when you can say Italy, we don't need you in the Six Nations when they're playing their flipping like. They had some terrible players that play for Italy, just terrible. But this Italy team at the moment is exciting. It's dynamic. The try they score was brilliant. They've got some great attacking settings. They're changing it up as well. They snipe around the corner. They're cutting angles back in. They're putting the ball out the back. Like, they are going in the right direction. Me, me personally, for Italy, would be they need to get some more players in the Premiership. Get some more. Like, Minotti is ultimately one of their best players. He's playing for Wasps. And obviously, he's taken out. He's not in the squad for personal reasons, whatever. But get more Italians in the Premiership. Yes, that loosens Treviso and Zebre. But they've been not great ever since they started. That doesn't make a difference. Put them in, get them, get Sevnegri, Garbisi, like, whatever is this winger called. I can't even pronounce it. Speroni, whatever his name is, get him on the wing. That's a Crystal Palace goalkeeper. But get, um, Five years ago. get yeah, get him on the get get him playing in the Premiership. Like that's where they're going to get the best exposure. They're going to get high interna- high European internationals. Um, yeah. In addition to that, the more Italian players there are not playing for Treviso and Benetton, is the more professional Italian rugby players there are that the Italian RFU don't have to pay their salaries. So for every Italian nine playing for Gloucester, like you've got four who play each week for the Italian club teams. That's only four. Obviously, you have to be quite good to become one of the four, but it's a similar thing that Argentina benefit, have benefited from is... Like you can only play two scrum halves in a game. You can only play two wingers in a game. You can only play two loose heads in a game for each team. For every extra one you get being paid somewhere else, you can bring another player through, give more opportunities in a professional environment, wider player pool, better peak. It's yeah, I completely agree. And also it's a sign of their seriousness that they're starting to really work out which players, basically which English players can qualify for Italy because there's absolutely no reason why not to do it. Like, I'm actually quite surprised at the extent of it. Who knew that there were so many Italian second and third generation rugby players in England? But 
like apparently there are so go for it <laughs>